All right, morning, everyone. We'll get started with Coach Trailer. JJ. Morning, Jeff. How are you doing? Good, JJ. How are you? Not bad. Thanks for joining us this morning. What were some of your biggest takeaways from the, the gameplay this past week? Um, our ability to come out and score so quick, I thought was huge. Um, I thought it was just a unbelievably well-designed play uh, by Coach Lunny and our kids just executed it so well. And it was just good, especially just they'd only allowed 90 yards a game on the run. And our goal was to try to double them up and, uh, we ended up tripping them up, but, uh, we got 75 on that one play. I thought that was huge. Uh, defensively, we came out very strong early. I didn't finish the game exactly the way we wanted to, but you got to give UTEP a lot of credit and special team wise. I mean, the, the kick by Hunter, his seven touchbacks, all his extra points, and the big tackle by Rashad Wisdom on the kickoff, I thought were all very big plays in the ball game. Jeff, is it is it fair to say your offense looked a little unstoppable at points in that game? Um, other than high school and, and maybe here, I don't know that we've done. I don't know that we've ever not punted. Uh, maybe we have. I'm sure you and Greg know that better than I would. Uh, but that was pretty remarkable against a very good defense. I mean, Coach Pivotel has done a fantastic job. And you could tell they were good players, right? They were they were hitting us. They were frisky. They were chippy. They played with an edge. Uh, but our kids just kept finding a way. Uh, Frank just made so many plays, you know, throwing off balance, just different arm angles to get first down. And he's really turned into an incredible quarterback right in front of all of our eyes. Greg? Jeff, how do you evaluate the play of the offensive line and just the blocking in general through these past couple of weeks that we've seen? You know, we had a couple of MAs in the game that, you know, they had a, a, a few more minus plays than we've had. It was just strictly mental, maybe the open week. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Just, but other than those couple of plays, we were very, very solid, very physical. Uh, I wouldn't say dominant because those guys were still making plays, but we were. We, we definitely covered them up and gave our backs and our skill kids a chance to make plays. We talked all through last year and the start of this year about a lot of the shuffling going on there. Has it made a difference recently to have some stability? Are you seeing a little bit of an uptick? Uh, we're still getting, you know, we were going to rotate a lot of kids still in there. I mean, you know, Ernesto came in again and played really well for us off the bench. Uh, that was huge. And uh, still haven't got KD back yet. So we're, we're still some shuffling left I'm afraid but we've had a pretty good run there with T Haynes at right guard and you know B Roth at left guard that's been a nice little deal for us and we sustained that Ernesto coming out there and playing well was also good uh when when T Haynes went down yeah I wanted to ask about Ernesto how did he kind of get into that position I believe this is the first time we've seen him play at guard uh, he, you know, he was injured all fall camp, and we didn't get him back to not long ago. So he's a guy that he can play center guard or tackle, and uh, he's just a scrappy, smart, intelligent, tough kid that we could put in a lot of spots. And what's the status report on, on Terrell Haynes? We saw him get banged up a little bit late in that game. Yeah, he just got rolled up. He'll be day to day. We'll see how that looks, you know. Uh, this is that time of year, man. Nobody's healthy. Everybody's beat up. And we're still hopefully six weeks away or hopefully even longer for being done. Who knows how long away we are. But uh, so we got to get these guys uh, back on the field at some point. But uh, hopefully we get KD back pretty quick. And we just keep fresh guys out there that are healthy. Back to you, JJ. Jeff, um, have you had any chance to reflect any, maybe in your quiet time yesterday, on, on what it feels like to be 9-0? That's how I start off every Sunday morning, you know, in my journal, in quiet time. Um, I'd be lying to you if I didn't say this is almost surreal, uh, a dream. Um, I appreciate how, J.J., you mentioned to our fan base to enjoy these moments. Uh, these are special moments. Uh, we'll look back in time one day and go, wow, that was an incredible ride. And I, I hope we've got many, many more of those in front of us, JJ. I do. But to be undefeated, I believe there's four of us left in the country. 
uh, such a new program. I'm so thrilled for my kids, man, my players. It just makes me feel so good for them. Um, they, they are the ones that deserve all this and I'm just so happy for them. What, what does it mean to you that, you know, we asked all the players that on Saturday and the consensus was they're not finished yet. They believe what we're telling them, right? Uh, trust is truth over time. I don't lie to my kids. I always tell them the truth. And um, we believe in our culture pillars. We believe the 2-1-0 triangle of toughness. We're, we're going to try to win the day. We're going to be the very best we can be today. And we know we're talented enough, J.J., and our coaching staff is good enough that if we do that, we're going to come out on top more than we're not. Greg? Jeff, looking at this week, how do you get the players to kind of stay focused and lock in on a team with a one and eight record? Is that a different challenge compared to somebody with a, like, like for UTEP, for example, when they're coming in with six wins? You just tell the truth. You get your single digit guys and your leadership council guys in a room, you tell them the truth. They don't have a very good record. Let's be honest. What is their head coach going to tell them? They can save their whole season right now. This could be what an unbelievable moment for those guys, right? But we can't control any of that. What can we control? It's our practice habits. we got to have the best academic day-to-day -day we can have. And tomorrow when we pad up, we got to go take care of the fundamentals. And if we practice correctly, and as long as we've been here, we have not played perfect. But our kids show up every Saturday. There's not been a game where you can tell me that our kids did not show up. We, not, we might not have played clean, Greg. We might not have won the game. But our kids always show up. And it's because of the way they practice. If our single-digit guys and our leadership council take care of their jobs, our players will follow. And I'm not trying to pass the buck. I know it's my responsibility to get that team ready. But my single-digit guys, I feel strongly, will take care of that. What are your expectations for the, the fan support and the turnout in the Alamo Dome this week? Well, if you were there, it, it was just so awesome the way our crowd showed up. I mean, from pregame on, our crowd was into the game. From chance for players, chance for the team. Um, and it just feels good, right? If a fight would have broken out, they would have had about thirty to 35,000. We would have had about 5,000 maybe. Uh, but I'd rather fight with 5,000 than I would just my 70 players. At least we've got some shot, right? We just got to go one to seven odds instead of like one to 35,000 odds. So uh, that was awesome. There's such momentum in the city right now. Everywhere I go, it's birds up. Everybody is so into it. I would be shocked if our city does not show up Saturday. Hector. Morning, Coach. Good morning, Hector. Given that unlike the AP poll and the USA Today poll, the college football playoff rankings actually do lead directly to something, you're going to have an extra eye on those rankings when they come out uh, early this week? I won't even look at them. I won't know till one of you guys tells me. Uh, I just don't waste my time on it because I can't control it, right? And I know I say it all the time, Hector, but I've got you guys for that. And I trust y'all will do your jobs and let me know and we'll, we'll communicate on it. Uh, but I won't spend one moment thinking about it. Uh, you, I take a knee when you're supposed to take a knee. I'm not trying to get style points. It's not worth me losing a kid getting injured over some style point we're all chasing. That's why the college playoff system has to be expanded where we can quit arguing about it and settle our arguments on the football field which is the way the game was supposed to be played. Don't mean to go off on a tangent, Coach, but I think, I think a lot of us on here, frankly, have been advocating for that for years, and a common fan will tell you that as well. Do you have – has it crossed your mind? Do you have a preferred system, whether it's an 18 playoff, a 16-team playoff, anything along those lines? I think we've got to be very conscious of our players. We say the reason they're here is to get a degree, uh, right? So we've got to be mindful of that. I think you get to play in too many games. That's not – they've got to study sometime. They've got to go to class. They've got to get degrees. That's why we brought them here to begin with. So I would – before an expanded playoff, you know, more teams, obviously that's the case. Then we've got to shorten the season some, in my opinion. You just can't ask those kids to play 16, 17 games. 12 to 13 is a number – 14 is a stretch. I mean, it's close to me, in my opinion. Thank you, Coach. JJ. 
Jeff, is this week a uh, trap game for you guys? I can see where you would say that, JJ, but our, our seniors, I just don't think they'll let us do that. Our single-digit guys, they're smarter than that. Uh, we can't control it, uh, but I do believe that's the way the world will see it. Uh, I think our single-digit guys will respond correctly and will practice correctly. I think our fan base will show up, uh, and I think they'll bring the extra juice for us. Now, I know Sosa is going to show up. The band always shows up. Student section always shows up. They always bring the juice, and that'll get our guys going. But it'll be too late if we wait until then. We've got to be great tomorrow. When we tip it off, we got to be great in practice. And I feel strongly our single-digit guys will have us ready to go. Those single-digit guys, have, have they been, I guess, the reason why you guys haven't had a letdown so far this season? Because it's been pretty rare if you look around college football that – you know, a team as good as you guys hasn't, you know, at least played bad in one game. I, I'm going to load y'all up on a question. What I want y'all to ask my guys is who's the most important coach in your life? And every one of them will say they are the most important coach in their life. I'm not the most important coach in their life. They're the only ones, JJ, that really know what they're doing when they're alone. They're the only ones that can look in that mirror. And the only man that really matters is the man in the mirror. So, our players will take care of that. If they don't, we will not play well Saturday. I have not yet seen us not show up. I would be willing to argue on a great debate with you and Greg at any moment in our 12 games last year and our nine games this year in 21 games, we showed up every single one of them. Were we perfect? Heck no. Your head coach is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Our players are not perfect. But I promise you, we always give perfect effort. Greg? Jeff, what's the outlook for Tariq Wollin going forward? Where does he stand at this point? Uh, he's still day to day. Um, and we'll just see. You know, it's, it's a hand injury, thank goodness. Not legs, not ankles, not knees, not feet. So DBs can play a lot quicker than some positions because we don't even ask them to use their hands too much as far as catching the ball. We just want them to knock it down. Now, our defensive staff, they'd, they'd be really upset if they heard me say that. But uh, if we can get knocked down passes out of him, we'll be good. He's obviously been an important guy in that room. How did you guys have to sort of adjust for his absence in this game? Well, we really believe in Ken. We really believe in Corey. Uh, Xavier Spencer, we really feel good about. And we moved Jamal Sam out there as well. So we're, we're deep. Uh, we've still got kids. And uh, we're not going to make excuses. That's just the next man up mentality. What went into the, the move with Jamal and how did he sort of respond to that? What, what, what was the thought process there? He's just really good at covering when he's at safety as well. And uh, so he's just one of those rare kids that can play both positions. Hector? Coach, I think I know how you're going to answer this question, but is there a, uh, any kind of a team penalty for the term 12 and 0 being said? Culture pillar violation, Hector. I mean, I know I am a, a broken record, and I know y'all get really, really tired of all my boring answers, but it's just who we are. We just won't do it. We're just not going to. Because the moment you do that, you won't be the, the only one that matters is number 10, Hector. It's the only one that matters because it's the next one in front of us. And if we violate that, we won't get number 10. Thank you, Coach. I had to ask it. Sorry, I know I'm boring. JJ? Jeff, I wanted to ask you about uh, Brandon Brown. It looked like for my eyes, he played a pretty good game. How did he grade out? And just what are your thoughts on him? He's just such a great human. He's one of – I know I say it all the time, but he's one of my favorite guys on the team. Why? He practices hard every day. He's got a beautiful smile. He's never on a list. He works his tail off on every aspect of his life. And uh, we're so glad he rethought his decision and came back to us. I mean, that was a blessing to get him back. And uh, he's a dominant nose guard. He can take on double teams. He's unselfish. He doesn't care about how many plays he makes. And he still makes plays. He splits double teams and makes plays. And he was one of our trying to up for winners this week. You guys are pretty stacked at that nose guard position. What just what has he done to kind of elevate himself there? Uh, well, he's very uh, 
position sound. I mean, he plays with heavy hands. Uh, I think the lights are going out in George on us again, JJ. I mean, come on, Kyle. Thought we had this thing fixed. Jiminy Cricket. Brent, help. Hello. Earth, to JJ. Can't make it up, man. Can't make it up. Is uh, Brandon Brown, what has what, what he done to, to send the – to get some more playing time? We need more boosters to give more money. We're cutting the light bill already. we got electricity problems here at the race. Donate now. Keep us afloat. Uh, no, he just – he's just so position-specific with his, like, his IQ, his hand placement, head placement, leverage. He's strong. He's athletic. He's a good human. Comes from a good family. He's a really good football player. And the best part about it, um, when I, you know, my kids sit like my seniors sit up front, then juniors and sophomores and freshmen. And I throw all the I throw all the shirts to them, man. I love to throw the triangle shirts to them when they win them. And the further the throw, the longer I get to keep them. He's a young, young player. So that means we get to watch him for a few more years, which really excites me. Greg. Jeff, what do you make of uh, what Corey Mayfield has done this season? And especially like we talked about with Tariq not being out there, kind of being, it seems like he would be sort of the top guy in that room and the leader in that position at that point. Him and Ken both uh, do a really good job. They're both very good tacklers. They compete for the ball. They're coachable. They're physical. So they both made a lot of plays for us for the last two years. And, and they'll both be back too. So we're excited about that. Corey has incredible experience with how long he's played here and how many snaps he's been out there for. Is there a way that you sort of see that that pays off or that something that he does that you say that's kind of a mark of a veteran guy who's been through a lot at the position? Yeah, no doubt. We're a mature football team. Our guys have played a lot of ball and uh, he really loves Coach Graham. And he's very coachable. And uh, yeah, I'm thrilled with Corey's how he's progressed. And you know, his dad was a good player, known him for a long time as well. Coach, uh, one and eight or not, uh, what are some things that Southern Miss does well on the field that you guys have to be prepared for? They've got great tradition, first of all, and um, very impressed with how hard they play. Uh, they just, you know, it's new, right? You got a new program, new coach coming in there, and uh, just a lot of tradition, a lot of athletes. Uh, we landed at 5 a.m. Uh, Sunday. So I have not spent the time on them yet to be able to speak to you very specifically. We didn't get done. We pushed everything back last night. So we didn't get done with our team meeting. So about 8.30 last night. So I've only, get, I've only got in about an hour and a half to two on watching their video right now. So for me to comment much more than that would not be fair to you and your question. Greg? Jeff, you guys have been among the best in the nation at not committing penalties so far this season. Is there anything particular that's been key to that or anything you can point to that's kept that number so low? I was disappointed Saturday. We jumped up there to eight, you know, and I thought we were emotional at times. And the game was very chippy. Um, and that'd be a nice way to put it. Uh, but it's just the attention to detail off the field. It's just in stretch line, making sure you get all the line. It's running all the way off the field. It's, uh, you know, on time is late, early is on time, having your notes, taking good notes, listening with your eyes and ears. Uh, when you take care of the little things, the big things take care of themselves. And if you were to say that to my kids, I guarantee they would all answer the exact same way. Uh, that's what it is. You got to just be buttoned up and uh, can't be emotional. It's got to be instinctual. And uh, when we're instinctual, we're a really good football team. When we get emotional and we start getting outside of our culture, uh, that's when things happen that aren't so good. And uh, your guys' starters played pretty deep into the fourth quarter in this one. Was it just a feeling that the game was still in the balance or was there any other kind of motivation there? Heck, I mean, the week before they were down 17 with four minutes left and they had the ball driving to win uh, on the last possession of the game. Yeah, those things aren't over now. College football, that, that, when y'all think it's over, it's not over. There's a lot left. That's why I get to write, write those great stories because y'all are up there drinking Kool-Aid saying the game's over. Then you look back down there and go, hey, we got a ball game going down here. So, no, I didn't feel comfortable uh, until maybe when I took Frank out when I felt comfortable.
Kyle came in here and moved in front of the lights. That's why he's stalled right now to make sure the lights don't go out, JJ. That, that is correct. Uh, anything else for Coach Trailer? I, I got one more, Kyle. Uh, Jeff, tomorrow UTSA basketball starts their season. I know you're a basketball fan. Uh, just what are your thoughts on what Steve Henson's gonna got going to see? And Karen tomorrow too, right? Aren't they both going tomorrow? And Karen's at home. He's on the road. Is that right? No, it's a double header. Home, home double header. Oh, uh, you know, I'll be in there as quick as I can. I got to get caught up on Southern Miss, but uh, I love them both. Love hoops. Can't wait to watch. I'm ready to pass the torch, right? This, this sick feeling I have in my gut, I'm ready to get it going, JJ. I'm ready to be a normal guy, go in the gym, get some popcorn, talk some crud, and second guess Karen and Steve for their inbound plays. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, Greg. Jeff, do you have any orange for the orange out this weekend? I don't know if we've seen that look on the sideline yet. You know, my wife has told me that when you're as uh, fat as I am, I need to stay in dark colors because anything light makes me look worse. My head is big, right? And, uh, and I haven't been out in the sun in a while, so I'm getting wider by the day. So a big white bald head on top of orange does not sound very good. So I'm sure I'll be, I'll be dark and trying to look slim, Greg. All right, that seems like a good way to close it. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Yeah, I'm the last bird's up. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. Appreciate it.